Video two of the 3D printing crankbait. One of the things that I was thinking about earlier today is that I didn't make a compartment for the steel or stainless steel shot to go in for the rattles. So I don't want that stuff to be bouncing all around up there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print one here at my house in just a second. Uh, I'm gonna make sure it all goes together. Uh, see what it looks like, see what the fit finish and everything is of it so we can, uh, I don't want to spend a ton of time on it making those compartments and everything for the shot to go in. So we're going to try to 3D print one first, see if it goes together, see what it looks like and if it works, I'll go back into Fusion 360, redesign those compartments, print the actual one and then get to uh, putting it together. So let's print it. Well, so far I'm extremely happy with this, um, how it's turned out. Again, I don't claim to be a 3D expert. I don't claim to be a lure designer at all. But I wanted to try to mesh my technology know-how with fishing, so here it is. Um, so the 1.5 crankbait I was showing you guys, I was using for a, a slight model. Um, and the Chinese knockoff. I want to show you something here really crazy. <laughs> this uh, thing actually fits right on the side of this crankbait. So, if you can get my fat head out of the picture there. and so, so it'll, Look at that. It fits perfectly on the side of this Chinese knockoff. The bill is in the correct orientation, but the bill on a 1.5 kind of thickens towards the base. That's why I won't go on there. Um, I'm not going to. I'm not going to waste one of these bills uh, and glue it in this because, again, if you saw in the video there, I printed this in PLA because PLA is a lot cheaper than the other two, and I wanted to make sure that it would work before I spent a bunch of time on it. Um, and again, in the beginning of the video, I talked about not having the cavities. You guys can hear the. Uh, Actually, you can hear, there's actually the rattles that you hear inside this. There's two different things in here, and one of them is a mistake, I'm sure. Um, there's actually plastic beads, which I'm, sh I'm sure are the same plastic that this bait's made out of. It's, I'm sure this is injection, injection molded, and that's just some stuff that's actually got thrown in there on accident. Or maybe they have it for a rattle, it's supposed to be a steel shot of, of sorts. 
Some of them don't have rattles at all. Like this is a Strike King KVD. Again, it doesn't. It's silent. Strike King makes some that do have the this do have a rattle, but this one has a big giant steel weight. I assume it's like a steel BB. If you guys can hear there. So I I f forgot to put this little section in there. So what I'm going to do in the next video is I'm going to take this thing apart. I'm going to see if I can scavenge those little uh, stainless steel wire keepers in there to see if they'll fit in mine. And I'm going to scavenge that shot out of there. And I'm going to measure it with some calipers to find out how big that thing needs to be. I want it to be able to move back and forth. This one here is actually too tight and it gets stuck every now and again. You can hear it there. It doesn't rattle anymore. Only thing you can hear is those plastic BBs as opposed to that. So I don't want it to get stuck in there, so I'm going to make that a little a little heavier. And as far as I know, I'm going to ask some people that are way more knowledgeable of this than me, but I'm going, as far as I know, I can't find the displacement of my model. I can find the area of it and the volume of it. Uh, I'm going to do some basic hand calculations with the volume that I have um, with the material that I'm going to be printing in this ad is going to be ABS, and I'm going to take the characteristics of ABS, put it into my mathematical calculation to see if I can get the displacement of my weight uh, or displacement of my lure. That way I can actually uh, find out how much shot it's going to take to make this thing neutrally buoyant, buoyant. So when you cast it out there, it just barely sinks under the surface. I want to create a crankbait that you don't have to reel really fast to get down. I want it to be very, very neutrally buoyant, if that's a word, neut neutral buoyant. Um, I know that's a word. That, that way when you cast it out there, when you reel it, it actually will stay there in the same spot. Um, the only downfall of that is, is that once you get closer to the boat, it's going to, you're going to have to reel it up against the lip of the, of the bait, which uh, may or may not work at all. But that's what I'm going to try to do. And so here it is put together. Again, I'm not going to glue this thing together, but it fits together pretty daggone good for a first attempt this thing um and one thing that i talked about on the first video i thought these little spots for the the uh, the wire keepers to go through here one on the belly one on the back and the hook keeper on the front were going to be a little small and that is 100 percent true i don't know that you guys are going to be able to see this or not maybe able to see it there but it's very tiny and again it wasn't that tiny on the design it's just the way that the printer works and the actual functionality of the printer and the amount of uh, pre precision that it has if you were to do a um, like a resin print it would be a lot better but i don't have a resin printer at my disposal so you, what you see is what you get so the cool thing about this is again guys i just guessed on these slots for the bill and everything i just you know i, I took it from the same angle as the other uh, 1.5 but I didn't measure these uh, circle board bills. I didn't measure the width of them or anything. But I'm here to tell you that I couldn't have made it any better. There's no way in the world I could have actually chose that to be any better. And again, sorry that my camera's picking up my... It's going to fall out of here, but um, it, it fits f almost perfectly. It is going to work 100%. The other cool thing about this is, is that I have other blade or bill links like this one here. This one is, uh, let's see, I'll tell you in just a second. But this is a longer bill. I I have two different, I have three different blade or bill links here. I have a, um, let's see. I have an inch and a quarter, inch and five eighths. Those are the two I just showed you. And then I have here, um, this is a, let's see, 15 sixteenths. So this is more of a coffin style. Um, almost looks like a, uh, a 1.5 in my opinion. So there it is. That's what the uh, 15 sixteenths inch bill on there. Again, I cannot be any more happy than I am about the design of this crankbait it is crazy how awesome this thing has come out you can see the the finish there is fairly decent i might have to do a little bit of sanding the eyes man i tell you what i love the way the eyes come out and it's going to be tough to get it to, you can see it there man i tell you what it looks phenomenal 
I cannot wait to uh, get a couple printed. So what I'm going to do, since I have three different types of bills, uh, it's going to take me a little bit. It's going to be a scientific experiment for us all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print several of these things in not only ABS, but I'm going to also do PETG. Let's see which one works better. I have clear PETG, which I'm really excited about. I'm hoping PETG works. Um, so it'll actually come out, look similar to this bait right here. And then once I get everything done and I can actually make sure everything is going to work, actually, you know, once I figure out how big this shot is on that, that that's in there, uh, I'm going to use some actual BBs. They're cheap. I can go to Walmart and pick up some, uh, some of the old copperhead BBs that we all have used when we were kids. And I'm going to use them as uh, weight in here. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm very happy with the way it's came together. So I think how I'm going to do this as we go forward is I'm going to, again, try to do some mathematics here. Maybe get some of my students involved to see if they can figure it out. The uh, volume of this, I can find the volume through Fusion 360, no problem. The displacement is something that's kind of, um, you know, loo to me right now. I'm not a huge math guy. So I'm going to try to figure that out. And if all else fails, I figure that I could take one side of this, wrap it in tape so it's not allowing water into the bill slot and everything, and set it in water, plastic will float, and then just keep dropping BBs into it until it sinks. So and when it sinks, then I know half of this is going to weigh, you know, it's going to take that amount to sink half of this, so I can just double that and have the amount of weight needed to get it neutrally buoyant. So... I can't wait to see what happens. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's uh, pretty amazing. Again, I, I showed you that it fits on that other one just to show you guys that I'm not knocking off a KVD 1.5. This thing won't, won't fit on here at all. It just won't go. So there's a huge difference in the bait here compared to, again, it was crazy that this Chinese knockoff thing just acts, you know, absolutely fits right on there. If it wasn't for the bill being a little thicker, um, it would fit right on there. Pretty cool stuff. So stick around. Video three on the way in the making as I you're watching this i'm going to print some of these in different materials try to figure out the buoyancy level of them try to figure out where what they need to weigh and then um we're just going to get after it man it's going to be r d at that point it's going to be uh going out and testing it and and you know iterating our design guys thanks for sticking around part two of 3d printing a crankbait hope you guys are enjoying this series as much as i am doing it. you guys are at a point where you can go out and lean on them get out there and put a hook in something's face and we'll see you next time on another line